Greetings everyone, I trust that you are well today. I know that the Lord is blessing and keeping us. Today, my subject is, there is healing in heaven. There is healing in heaven. My text is taken from Revelation chapter 21, 1 to 4. The Bible says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God shall, shall be with them, and be their God. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I am sure the Lord has already had a blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you are God all by yourself. We thank you for this day. We pray that you will be with your people out there and help that this message of blessed hope will resonate with your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is healing in heaven. The Bible is filled with many wonderful promises about heaven. But perhaps the most wonderful one is that one day we will live with Jesus forever. The record says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 that I have not seen nor ear heard neither have it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. At the first coming of Jesus, he came as a baby. And the next time he comes back to earth, he will be coming to get his people so they can live in heaven with him for a thousand years. But at his third coming, at the end of the millennium, at the end of the thousand years, after the righteous have reigned and lived with Christ, Jesus will come back to earth with his people as heaven will come down to earth. Human history began in paradise and human history will end in paradise. What began in Genesis will be brought to completion in Revelation. We serve a God who is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. Watch this now. In Genesis 1 and verse 1, the heavens and the earth were created. In Revelation 21 and verse 1, the heaven and the new earth were instituted. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 10, the seas were created. But in Revelation 21 and verse 1, there are no more seas. Why is it that there will be no more seas? You see, the river of life will be restored. 
and it will flow from the throne of God. You see, it did not rain in the garden. Plants were watered from beneath the earth. The water in the garden of Eden flowed out of the rivers. This river that flows from the throne of God is the same water that Jesus told the woman at the well that if she drink of this water, she will never thirst again. In the book of Revelation, John has attempted to describe what he sees in vision. We have the description of heaven in so many words in the Bible, describing how the holy city, the new Jerusalem, will come down as a bride to earth from God. So we have proof that heaven is up, but the new heaven will be down on earth. In our mind's eyes, many of us have imagined time after time what heaven will be like. But I do believe no matter how we try with our infinite minds and limited understanding and sinfulness to describe heaven with our minds, eyes, and imagination, it will be better than that. And so we look forward to see the first paradise, which the first Adam lost, and that which the second Adam will regain for us. That land with placid streams, and the land where night never come, a land where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good gold. There is myrrh and there is onyx stone. The river is watering every tree that is pleasant to the eyes and flows hard by the tree of life in the middle of the garden. The gold which is in the heavenly paradise will be used to pave the streets. The river has no earthly source, but is a pure river of the water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb of God. There will be a tree of life, beloved friends, <laughs> for the healing of the nation. And this tree will bear 12 different fruits every month. And during the year, the garden will be divided by the river which flowed in several streams. According to the passage, watch this, according to the passage, before it describes the tree of life as being on the other side of the river, which I suppose means that are the tree of life that are on either side of the river means that there were many such trees but one of its kind with trees growing on either side all of them of the same kind all are called the tree of life the record says the leaves on the tree of life are for healing the nations as the leaves are the least precious products for fruit bearing tree so the least things that God has to do with come from him have healing virtue in them powerful the presence of Christ will preserve the inhabitants of heaven forever and so in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, the sun, the S-U-N, and the moon were created. But in Revelation, there is no need for the sun, the S-U-N, or the moon. There is no day or night. There is just one eternal day because the glory of God will illuminate the new Jerusalem. The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, 
who is the light of the world, will do away with all the darkness. In Genesis 3, 14 to 17, man is cursed. The woman is cursed. The serpent is cursed. And the ground is cursed. But in the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 3, there is no curse. In Genesis, sorrow and, and pain begin. But in Revelation 21 and verse 4, there are no more tears and no more sorrows and no more pain. In Genesis 3 and verse 19, death enters human history. But in Revelation 21 and verse 4, there is no more dead. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24, man is driven from paradise. But in Revelation 22 and verse 14, man is restored to paradise. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to going to that place that is called heaven, that is called paradise where there'll be no more sickness, no more pain, no more cancer, no more COVID-19, no more diabetes, no more arthritis, no more heart attack, no more diseases, no more wigs, no more false teeth, no more bills, no more cars, no more death, and no more, no more. In that land, of no regrets. Many individuals often wonder if heaven is a real place. We should never listen to atheists or evolutionists. Look at it, beloved friends. Why would God go through the trouble to create a new heaven if there was not going to be anyone to live on it? heaven will be Eden restored. The day will come when the eternal paradise will be restored and Adam and Eve were not placed on a cloud but they were placed on the earth. The new Jerusalem will come down to earth. The record says beloved friends in St. John 14, 1 to 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare that place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The greatest promise in the Bible is found in St. John 14, 1 to 3. And so in the meantime, we should make sure you keep the blessed hope in your hearts and in your mind, beloved friends, it is as real as sound and melodious as music. And so in the text, Jesus does not go into a lot of details in describing heaven. But John the Revelator does in Revelation chapter 21. But Jesus did say that heaven was a place where he was going. Jesus says heaven would be the place which one day he would take all of his redeemed saints. It was Jesus who said he came down from heaven in St. John 6 and verse 38. It was Jesus who taught his disciples, our Father who art in heaven. Hebrews 8 tells us that Jesus is sitting at the right hand side of his father which is in heaven in Luke we are told about Jesus's ascension 
and how Jesus was carried up into heaven. Even God himself in 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, we will hear from heaven. You see, the devil wants you to think that heaven is not real because he was kicked out of there. But I want you to know today that as long as you keep trusting God with the oil of the Holy Spirit in your lamps, you will be a force to be reckoned with. You see, this Advent movement is a movement that is destined for eternity. You cannot leave the movement, but the movement is the movement that will leave you. And so heaven is not only a real place, but a prepared place. Jesus wants to spend this long, never-ending, everlasting reunion with us in heaven. If you are going on a trip here, this beloved friends, you have to make some arrangements. So what should we be doing at this time? We should be setting our houses in order. We should be repenting of our sins. We should be forgiving. We should be kind to our neighbors as ourselves, beloved friends, because heaven is going to be a prepared place. And so if heaven is going to be a prepared place, we have to make sure we are prepared as well. So when you are going on a trip, you have to make some arrangements. Most people today do not just show up, but you call before and make some arrangements. You call the hotel or the people before and make sure that the preparation is made ahead of you going. Especially these days, beloved friends, you cannot afford to go anywhere unprepared. And so you have to prepare before. Prepare before for heaven. Jesus says, I have gone to prepare a place for you. The meaning of this text, beloved friends, is clear as crystal. Jesus says he has gone before us to prepare for us. If God, beloved friends, is preparing for us, it help us every now and then to prepare ourselves too and to get excited. We should be excited about how God is preparing for his people. And because God is preparing for us, we should be doing the same. God is on his way. So heaven is going to be a wonderful place. Can you imagine when we live a million years in that wonderful place, basking in the love of Jesus and beholding his face, it will seem for just a moment of praising his name. What a glad reunion day that is going to be. Can you imagine, beloved friends, there'll be no sorrow there, no more parting over there, no more sickness, no more pain, no more heartaches over there. And when we get to heaven, I need to ask some of these prophets, how did you make it here? Moses, that champion leader. I need to find David, that champion fighter, beloved friends, and ask him some questions. I need to ask John the Revelator, as he was exiled on Patmos. How did you make it out, my brother? Yes, my brother. Yes, my sister. Soon and very soon, we are going to see our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
there are some things in nature, beloved friends. When I see how beautiful they are, it blows my mind. <laughs> if God could create so many things on this beautiful earth, so many beautiful scenery, so many things in nature, just think of what heaven will be like. If God could create Dunn's River Falls and rivers and seas, just imagine heaven, what our home will be like. If God has these wonderful coconut trees and cocoa trees, imagine what heaven will be like. If God has sweet East Indian mangoes and jewelry mangoes, imagine what heaven will be like. If God has delicious pineapples and grapes, imagine what heaven will be like. If God has rose breadfruit and ackee and sawfish, imagine what heaven will be like. If God has rice and peas, and fried chicken, and mock chicken, and vegetarian chicken. Imagine what heaven will be like. I hope and trust that you receive it today. And so keep on keeping on, and keep the blessed hope in your hearts.